Can you believe animes look like this? It's actually insane how much anime has evolved over the years. So hop on my magic bus and let me take you for the ride over the years from 1910s to the present day. Let me tell you the history of anime. So the oldest anime that we can technically find is Katsudo Sashin. This is just like 50 frames and spans across like 4 seconds. I don't consider it anything, but it's a start. It's a start to this immaculate world that anime is going to create in the next upcoming decades. So the pioneers, the two animes that started it all are known as The Dull Sword and Urashima Taro. They were produced by Juichi Koichi and Seitaro Kitayama, respectively, and they both are considered as the fathers of anime. The Dull Sword came out in 1917, and it was like a four minute short film, which is almost restored to its original form. But in the Urashima Taro's case, we all know what Urashima Taro is. It is an old folklore of that turtle, and he goes to the deep sea, and things like that happen. It's again a silent film, and we weren't quite quite able to find the full part of Rashi Mataro. Uh, according to what I have able to come across, only half of it has been restored. But again, these were the pioneers of Japanese animation and will forever be a part of history. Next, let's go to a little bit more modern times of 1920s. So what happened in 1920s was the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. Due to that, a lot of records before that have been wiped out. They have like been banished to the Shadow Realm. You can't find a lot of things that were produced before 1923 because of the records just not being available. Due to this earthquake and its mass destruction, we have lost a lot of gems to the history. So in 1924, The Hare and the Tortoise was made by Sanai Yamamoto. And we all know the classic story of Hare and the Tortoise. If you haven't listened to this beautiful story like at least like 200 times in your lifetime, how are you lives in this world? So this was a six minute short animated film. There are more animes that were produced during this time. The Pot, A Story of Tobacco, Yasuji Murata's Monkey and Crabs, and most of them are silent films ranging from like 1 minute to 10 minutes at max in length and they are almost based on folklores going into the further decades the themes will change and the animation will get even better Let's go to the 1930s. These are still pre-war productions because war played a huge part in the development of anime. Before this in 1930s, mostly the animators used to work for PR for the companies, educational films for the government and eventually for the military. During this time, there were still animes being produced but the quantity was so less and there are many animes that are just lost to the time at this point. There's one that I want to talk about. It is with Within the world of power and women. This is the first Japanese anime to feature voiceovers. This was again completely black and white and this is considered a lost film. There is not a single print available for this film like ever. And what's the plot of the story you may ask? Our protagonist, the father son, uh, ha has his wife like which has a huge physique. Like it is in the plot that she has an incredibly large physique and because of this he becomes involved in an affair like like a, I, don't, I don't know what the <laughs> plot is heading but yeah that, that's the plot one is this and the next is the dance of chagamas this is the first fully cell animation short what is cell animation you might ask is the hand-drawn animation you have a transparent sheet you draw and then you 
layer it and draw another frame and i also watched some tutorials on how to do cell animation and my god it's so impressive how much effort they put in just to show like two three five minutes of animation it's very very commendable of how much sheer dedication and hard work it takes to make animations like these is very very tough and it's very very impressive and you can find the dance of chagamas on youtube i was able to find it it's not lost by any means it's it's like seven minutes the plot in the dance of chagamas revolves around a group of tanukis which come to a temple and cause all kind of chaos and havoc that's it that's the plot there is nothing more to that so now we come to the times of war and what happened during war was that japanese government wanted to promote some nationalism so to do that they forced animators to produce nationalist animes or nationalist films to like you know you know how propaganda works so to do that they had the film law and a lot of things happen but one film stands out among all of them and that is Momotaro's Sacred Sailors. This is uh, of course a Japanese propaganda film which glorifies the Japanese Imperial Navy which actually for made the film. This movie is quite significant because of the proof of it being a propaganda film with the indoctrination of nationalism to the children because the literally the first scene of the film is for children so uh, well that's something to think about i guess now we come to the post wars japan under u.s occupation had another huge different animation industry altogether so what happened is that u.s came and animation studios started to develop and form now and Tohei Doga was one of the first of them with the ambition of becoming the Disney of the East. More of them in the next segment. So now leaving behind the war, we come to the times of Toei Animation. Toei is considered to be the oldest Japanese animation studio of importance. Toei with Mushi Production were founded and they produced the first colored anime film named Hakujaden or The Tale of White Serpent, which was an adaptation of Song Dynasty's old Chinese folktale. The Legend of the White Snake. So this is an actual 78 minutes of movie and it's so good to watch. Like impressive to see what they were able to do when they released it in October 22nd 1958. It's impressive to see how well made it is for that old of a time. And Hayao Miyazaki has said that this was the movie that inspired him to get into the animation industry and you know he went on to make some really really classic animes that we still talk and still cherish to this day so this film indirectly and directly played a huge part in changing the animation industry forever and after the success of this film in japan as well as in us in 1961 when it was distributed toei started to make films every single year in 1961, Tezuka-san established Mushi Product after his contract with Tohei Animation expired. And after that, Mushi Production went on to make some bangers, which I'm going to discuss in the upcoming decades. And you know, Tohei went its own way and it also developed some classics that you still watch to this day. That is the impact of Toei over the time. Now let's come to the 1960s. 60s is the time when Japanese anime really started to take its shape and form its own identity. They had these anime characters with large and exaggerated facial features like large eyes, big mouths and large heads. In 1963, one of the more influential animes of the time was released, Astro Boy by Mushi Productions. I told Told you Mushi production would stand out and they would create some classics. Astro Boy was I, I would say relatively popular both in Japan as well as in the United States. It was highly influential to other anime in 1960s after 
Astro Boy, a lot of animes were followed with the themes with robots and space. And during this time, a lot of firsts were created, like the first night anime, the first television series by Tohei Doga, the first magical girl anime, the first like uh, shoujo anime, a lot of firsts during this time. But defeating all of these, there is one feat that stands among all of them. In 1969, Sazai-san was released. Sazai-san began airing in 1969 and it still continues till date with almost over 7,500 episodes and it's actually impressive. I am underselling how impressive this feat is. It's, 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 it's like huge. I don't know how they were able to be so incredibly consistent but with over 50 years of continuous airing, it has been amazing. This is a huge feat. Now let's move to the 1970s when some huge events happened as well. Now we come to the 1970s when the competition rose, Toei Animation had to cut its staff. Moshi Production went bankrupt for a while and its former employees went and created studios like Madhouse and Sunrise again two hugely popular studios now. But then Mushi Production came back and it was revived four years later. One of the more successful animes from 1970s would be Tomorrow's Joe, which was extremely popular. It had an iconic status in Japan. Another popular anime was Lupin 3. It was again extremely extremely popular. And another one that got extremely popular was Haiti. Haiti didn't get that popular in Japan but it gained international success mostly from European countries as well. In coming to European countries, this was the period when Japanese animation reached Europe technically. With this the productions aimed at the European children and the Japanese children synonymously. And another genre started to gain popularity, it's mecha animes. And one of the pioneers being Space Battleship Yamat. This anime is often told as one of the pioneers in the space operas, but you know what got truly popular. It was the 1979 originated mobile suit. Gundam. In contrast to these action-filled buster animes, a lot of shoujo and josei animes were also getting popular and I I'm all with that man. And now we come to the beautiful time of 1980s. The animes that were in 1980s are still talked about and still watched on par. Uh, we still know about these animes because 1980s isn't that long ago but still they were extremely influential. 1980s was, I think, one of the most influential times in the history of anime. By who? Guess it was Hayao Miyazaki. Hayao Miyazaki. Who made his film Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind in 1984. And then, you know, it's, it's one of the best uh, and one of the best and most recognized films of all time. And after that, they made their own studio. You know, you might have never heard of this studio. I think it's called Studio Ghibli or something. You know, that small studio that only made like two, three films and only was a little bit... 1980s was a very influential time with animes and movies like Akira, Dragon Ball Z. A lot of classics were made during that time and a lot of of huge productions were being made during that time because of the huge popularity that uh, anime was getting. Space operas were being created, romances were being created, shoujo animes were being created, martial arts, sports animes like Captain Tsubasa were being created, a lot of different variety of animes were being created at that time and it was generally one of the most fun times uh, to uh, actually read about in the history of anime because just so much was going on during that time and it's generally i think one of the most influential eras in the history of anime if you don't exclude the one coming right next to it 
Let's come to the 1990s, the era of Evangelion. I think it shouldn't be even called 90s. We should just say pre-Evangelion and post-Evangelion because Evangelion was one of the biggest during the 90s. And it, it really influenced the Japanese animation industry. Because of the violence in Evangelion, censorship started to happen and quite a lot of it to say. Cowboy Bebop when released in 1998 was heavily, heavily censored and only half of its episodes were aired on the television and it became extremely popular. With that, a lot of gruesome animes also started to come such as Serial Experiments Lane, which was an extremely good anime. Serial Experiments Lane was so ahead of its time. It's, it's a genuinely beautiful anime. And in 1997, one of the most expensive films at that time was created. It was Princess Mononoke. They used 3D rendering as well as cell animation and there were 1,44,000 cells in that film or 144,000 cells in that film. And out of them, 80,000 of them were redrawn. It, was a, it, it is a beautiful film but, but of course now that 20 million dollars is nowhere that movie has been overtaken in the budget with the wind rises at like 31 million the space pirate captain at again 31 million stand by me doramon at 35 million and the most expensive film till now is the studio ghibli film is the tale of princess kaguya that released in 2013 and it's the most expensive film till now with 53 million dollars a budget and it, that that's a different era to be talked about but we are talking about the 1990s uh, i got sidetracked right over there but that's fine in 1990s a lot of mecha anime started to pop a lot of our classics like pokemon dragon ball z sailor moon digimon Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu Yu hakusho one piece which released at october 20 1999 like literally at the brink of the decade but again some very very popular animes were released and i gotta say it was a beautiful decade with a lot of very popular animes after 1990s what came was another uproar of anime from 2000s to till date the anime has changed so much it's actually quite difficult to tell it all in this video so like i will make another video just talking about the anime change from 2000 from animes like flcl naruto to the animes right now being something like demon slayer or jujutsu kaisen a lot of things have changed over just the past 20 years and i think it would be very difficult to talk about uh the past 20 years because there's so much detail that i want to go through them i'll make a whole new video about that so yeah if you're here still watching right now thank you so much for watching it genuinely means a lot it took me a lot of time to make this video and if i get anything wrong please comment down below it would help me and as well as the viewers watching this video because i know i'm going to get something wrong i did my research but I think I would have messed up here and there and somewhere. So if you have some extra information that you want to share, if I mess something up in this video, comment down below, it would help me a lot. And thank you so much. Uh, I don't think this video will get that many views, but the past few videos have gotten a lot of views, way more than I've ever expected. Generally, thank you so much. It genuinely, genuinely means a lot. Uh, and see ya. Have a nice day. Bye.